rustle of grass, the clatter of hoofs, the whistle of string, and the whiff of a step wind that fell into a hollow stem. All these sounds that surrounded our ancestors. Listening, people learned to play them, inventing a variety of musical instruments. Mobile, lightweight, and convenient for nomadic life. The project about musical instruments created by the great nomadic civilization. Customs and traditions, original rich culture, centuries-old history. Uyghurs are one of the most ancient Turkic-speaking people of Central Asia. Their roots go back to centuries and millennia. The first mention of Proto-Uyghur tribes is found in ancient Chinese chronicle in the first millennium BC. According to researchers, the origins of the Uyghurs date back to the nomadic people of the Dinlin, which existed as far back as the 3rd century BC. The historical homeland of the Uyghurs is East Turkestan. According to scientists, in the early Middle Ages, the Uyghurs determined not only territorially, but already had economic and cultural centers. The early transition of the Uyghurs to a settled way of life became an impetus for the development of agriculture, culture, various crafts, art, including music. East Turkestan is the birthplace of such a musical masterpiece as the 12th Uyghur Mukams. This is a single cycle of musical and poetic works representing a kind alloy synthesis of the musical heritage of the people. Historians suggest that the emergence of such art as Oriental Makamat dates back to the 5th to 6th centuries. Development took place in the 7th to 8th centuries, and the complete formation of the classical cycle takes place in the 10th, 12th centuries. There are many legends and stories about the origin of this genre. Translated from Arabic, makam means place, overnight. According to one version, during long stay, people brightened up their leisure time, retelling stories from life, telling about heroes, describing bright events. Later, honed masters reached the high level, and so the genre was formed, the makam, which of course in turn were influenced by the developed cultures of Indians, Persians, Arabs. Surprising thing is the similarity of this genre among many Eastern people, but at the same time each of them has its own unique flavor and identity. On November 25, 2005, 12 Uyghur makams were inscribed on the UNESCO Intangible World Cultural Heritage List. The cycle of musical works includes a song choral part, a dance part, but of course the main part is the instrumental part. Well, when we talk about musical instruments, we must talk about the musical heritage of the people, because everything is interconnected. Say, let's take the mukam. The beginning of the mukam is always played on the satar, which means that somehow the satar appeared thanks to the mukam, because we needed such an instrument with such a sound, not like the others. Satar is a bow instrument used mainly at the beginning of Mukam. It comes from Farsi. C means three strings. Sitar. Sitar. 
It is worth noting that the sitar originates from the ancient instrument sahtar, which means three wires. It was invented in the 13th century by the poet, musician and Sufi Amir Husro. Over the centuries, sahtar was not only preserved but also improved. So today, we can hear the richest orchestral sound of this unique instrument. In Uyghur folk ensembles, sahtar plays a key role. Traditionally, Mukamchi, performer of Mukams, plays a solo opening part on the sahtar. The centuries-old development of one musical culture influenced not only the creation of instruments, but also contributed to their harmonious synthesis in other musical cultures. And each nation adopting one or another instrument contributed to its sound, changed forms, decorated in accordance with its traditions. Декорируются уйгурские музыкальные инструменты богато и разнообразно инкрустацией, костью, рогом. Uyghur musical instruments are decorated richly and variably, inlaid with bone, horn and wood carvings. Kashgar people used for inlay elephant, camel bone. Ili craftsmen used camel and cow bone. A large decorative, load in plucked and stringed musical instruments is the neck and the convex part of the body, inlaid with patterns. Every detail of this luxurious inlay is designed to a millimeter and is located exactly in its place. Because even the smallest but superfluous ornament can significantly change the tonality. Today master, musician Parkat Votaev, just like his ancestors, carefully works. Long and painstakingly he selects the material, creates a sketch and cuts out the necessary elements with geometric precision. This is Kashgar Revap, five-string, five-string Kashgar Revap, it has two types of five-string and here is seven-string. Seven-string differs in that it has one plain string. It is considered solo, but this is mainly used for the orchestra. Let's say I brought this tree from an ash grove from the Uyghur region, but I dried it for five to six years while I waited when it will crack. It stood up normally. Now I'm working on it. I too, as a musician, am interested in how it will sound. The beach is the strongest. They are grown both in Georgia and in Abkhazia and the Czech Republic. So I picked it up. It is also elastic. It does not bend. Creating an instrument, one always wants to hear its first sound as soon as possible. But string tension is still far away. This craft requires patience above all. It is important for the master to know all the subtleties and nuances. The purity of the sound is influenced by the type of wood. Frets on the neck are set according to a pattern that was used by our ancestors. The upper deck of a rabab will be made of leather. Stylized horns in a design is the decoration that characterizes the instrument, making it unique. This gidjak is also an ancient instrument. It is unusual, isn't it? Here for Turkic nationalities, the skin is pulled up from above. As you may have noticed among Uzbeks, Tajiks, Azerbaijanis, the skin goes on top and we have a second bottom. The skin is pulled inside, here, and it dresses like a nesting doll here and above. This tree also grows in Shanghai, called inserted, and here it is cut out. 
You see, and the darling is inserted, so that the resonance gives a double, this tree gives. And inside this skin and these holes from the skin, so that the sound comes out from the skin. Thanks to the structure of the instrument, the sound will be velvet deep with sonorous overflows. A close relative of Gijak is Persian Kemanchi. According to legend, Kemanchi was invented by a Persian physician and philosopher Avicenna. An ancient, rich in history Gijak, adapted in the Uyghur national culture, today plays an important role in the ensemble. In the Uyghur ensemble, Gijak is part of the string bow group. In addition to it, the orchestra is divided into three groups – woodwind, pinch plector and string percussion. String percussion instruments include Ravap, Ravap of Kashgar, Ravap Alto, as well as Dutar. Dutar Alt, this is a Ravap Bass. The fourth group is the strike group of instruments. All the instruments that hit are included. Is it Niagara, Small Niagara, Kairat? Flat stones that look like castanets. You know it's noisy. Female dancing. It's dab. This dab is also for the orchestra. It is an ethnic instrument. It is also made, as I said, from mulberry. You see, it is solid, solid instrument. It's put on fire that the pipe is specially heated and bent. It will be ready not immediately, in a day. Two, three, four, every day it bends a little, and you get such a round instrument. Leather is pulled on a wooden rim. As a rule, bull or sheep. It is noteworthy that before the game, the musician necessarily warm ups the leather membrane of any instrument in order to get a clear sound. Metal rings are suspended around the perimeter of the dab. They give the percussion instrument a specific sound. There are two types of dab, small nagme dab and large chon dab. It is believed that the largest dab has magical properties and was used by shamans in various rituals. Today this instrument is part of the ensemble, sets the beat, and its solo sound against the background of the ancient city clearly beats the rhyme of the time. And then the sounds of another instrument seem to paint landscapes from the past. The endless steps, the sound of streams and slow caravans floating against the backdrop of enchanting oasis. Nay, это духовой инструмент деревянный. Чаще всего его делают из бамбука. 
Now is a woodwind instrument. Most often it is made of bamboo. It has a diameter of only 2-3 centimeters. In size, it reaches 45-53, has six holes. When a musician blows, it can blow out a diatonic scale. Now it came from the depths of centuries, firmly entered the culture of the Uyghur people. Musicians perfect the play on the seemingly simple instrument. Thanks to the skillful fingering, we can even hear half tones in the range of up to two and a half octaves. All the listed musical instruments in a full set were used only in professional and some folk orchestras. Among the people, plucked instruments were especially popular – dutar, tambur, ravab, and that percussion instrument. These instruments were distributed throughout East Turkestan and had only minor local differences. The most prominent features in the southern are Kashgar and northern Kulja areas of the country. They are called Kashgar and Ilisk. It is not known for certain which region the Chang belongs to. An instrument similar to it can be found among many people. In the Uyghur version, it is a large string percussion chordophone. The Chang's capabilities are huge. For fun, we call the Chang piano in miniature. We know that the piano has a huge range of almost eight octaves. The Chang has almost four octaves, and therefore, it is technically a very mobile instrument. The presented Chang has 96 strings. Setting up such an instrument takes time. First, the master probing every string, listens to the sound. After, as the musician himself says, the Chang should rest and get used to the temperature, and only then you can begin to configure. As a result, picking up bamboo sticks, the musician enjoys the unique sound of the Chang. Only men were engaged in the manufacture of musical instruments. In the past, the activities of craftsmen were strictly regulated by the guiding principles. Each master had one, two and more assistant students, who were usually his closest relatives. So the secrets of mastery passed from generation to generation. Due to this, the heritage of the Turkic people has a rich collection of folk instruments, many of which sound not only in folklore ensembles, but are also widely used by contemporary authors. So the duo of the tambour with the dutar became a real decoration in the video clip of the singer Saniyam Ismail. This instrument is called dutar. The name came from Farsi. Du is two, and tar is a string. It turns out that this instrument belongs not only to the Uyghurs, also the Iranians, Tajiks, Uzbeks. The only size we have is not the same. The length of the neck of this instrument is symbolized with the length of our history, traditions, religion. As for the case, it is done personally for each performer. Take this instrument, it is divided into 14 parts. And if for children, it is divided into 12, 13. Uh, 
There is a new instrument. In 1975, Ahmed Aka made a new instrument called Kushtar. Now the people call it Kushtar, and its name is Kushtar. Because on the instrument itself, on its upper part, a bird is made. Respecting the history and heritage of their ancestors, modern music masters try to perfect the sound of an ancient instrument. This is Alt Kushtar. My work, no one has done it yet. As I said, that I was a musician, so that it would fit together for the ensemble. I made this Alt Kushtar. You will soon be able to hear the sounds of Alt Kushtar on the stage of the state academic Uyghur Musical Comedy Theatre. The theatre proudly bears the name of the Uyghur composer, people's artist of the USSR, the founder of Uyghur professional music, История театра начинается с 1934 года. В 1934 году по решению комиссариата тогда было. The history of the theater begins since 1934. Then, by decision of the People's Commissariat, it was decided to build a theater. А до этого театра не было, а был ансамбль. And before that, there was no theater. There was an ensemble of blue blues called. They settled in Panfilov, in Jarkand. They just sang. Sometimes they performed Kaike plays. Here's the basis of this ensemble. Became the basis of the first steps of the Uyghur theater. Today it is the only professional Uyghur theater in the world. On the stage, where artists perform only with higher specialized education introducing the audience with the best works of Russian and world classics. The Uyghur theater at the same time forms its national drama, accompanied by performers by the Nava Folk Ensemble. In our repertoire, there are many performances on historical topics. These performances are accompanied precisely by Uyghur musical instruments like satar, gijak, dutar. These instruments not only give some impetus, with the accompaniment of these instruments, we convey the deep content of the performance. Now we have completely switched to national instruments. That is, if we take the Azerbaijan musical performance of Arshin Malala, there is also symphonic music. We all transfer to national musical instruments and the sound is good. To save these masterpieces that appeared in the 5th, 6th centuries, which have reached us, we must save it for the next generation. Here the main role is played by national instruments. The artistic expression of the traditions of the people has evolved over the centuries. Carefully preserving, passing on to our next generations, our ancestors were able to give us the beautiful sound of national music, which was reflected in the unsurpassed 12 Mukams.
in modern compositions and became the soul of an entire nation.